continuous coverage of HP Discover. We're live in Las Vegas. This is theCUBE's second year at HP Discover. We are in the middle of our summer tour. It's not even summer yet, Stu, and we're in the middle of the summer tour. And uh, we're just coming off. I was at IBM Edge yesterday, which is an event uh, down in Orlando. Flew in today. Our colleagues are right behind me. We'll be here Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday broadcasting wall-to-wall -wall coverage. Uh, go to siliconangle.tv, check out siliconangle.com and wikibon.org for all the information. We're here with Nick Vandersweep of HP, we're going to talk about cloud. Nick's a cloud advisor and has uh, been on theCUBE before. Welcome mm -hmm. back, Nick. Hey, it's great to be here. Appreciate having you. So HP Discover again, uh, big, big event. I thought, you know, Meg was energized this morning. I thought she really did a good job connecting with your you know, core audience. You know, mm -hmm. She really spoke to them. It wasn't pie in the sky, it was like, we're here, we have a purpose. You know, we're about the enterprise, you're about the enterprise. It, it, she really, really does match the, the HP culture and, um, and that's what we try to do inside of the R&D organizations inside of HP is look at what are the customer needs and when we can get, it, get down to brass tacks and deliver um, value to the customers, make, makes the employees feel good and she's articulating that very well in the marketplace. Yeah, I thought so. I th again, I think she did connect. She's, you know, of course, Meg was a, an aspiring politician but it wasn't too politicized, uh, not, you know, not at all. Uh, you, you know a little really bit of enjoyed. military and Well, uh, she did a good job, I mean, yeah, to, she did a little Clinton-esque kind of connecting, yeah. but that's cool, I mean, I, no, I, I think that's, uh, that's desirable, but I thought that, you know, she really did do a good job of, you know, expressing the culture. So, and then she also talked about, you know, cloud. I wonder, I wonder if we could yeah, talk about your... Yeah, your so, so if I can just uh, yep. tee this one up, you know, sure. she said HP is, 70% of HP's revenue is infrastructure but cloud is, you know, a, a she big... She said hardware of, infrastructure. Hardware actually. infrastructure, right. Yeah, hardware not, infrastructure. not software, yeah. so, but, you know, where we lost the future of infrastructure and where it's going is cloud, and she teed up a topic she called mm -hmm. Converge Cloud, mm -hmm. um, and I think it, it's hitting the wire any minute now, and uh, can you key well, us in as to what there, we're talking about There's a couple of things to Converge Cloud. It's, it was actually, Converge Cloud itself was actually announced a few weeks ago, right. okay. um, and it's our strategy for cloud, overall cloud. Um, and when we, we look at um, cloud, we're not just looking at private clouds or managed hosters or managed uh, private clouds or public clouds or traditional. We're looking across the entire spectrum uh, with a converged cloud and a single architecture across all those different uh, areas. Because there's, there's a need for private cloud, there's a need for public cloud, there's a need for managed services. But um, what we've saw in the marketplace is there's private cloud providers building management systems for private cloud. There's public cloud providers that are building management systems for public cloud and security for that. And it's different. And it's making life worse for customers because now they got their traditional environments, they got their private clouds, they're, they're dealing with public clouds, and they got and, uh, and managed clouds as well. So they got three, four different security systems, management systems, provisioning systems, and with Converge Cloud, what we're trying to do is pull that all together. One common architecture across private, public, hybrid environments. You design your application, and it's independent of the deployment model. You can design it, and it deploys to public, or uh, you know, develop it in the public cloud and then you deploy it in the private cloud, for maybe for security uh, purposes, but if you need extra resources, you burst to the public cloud again. And it's all transparent, all easy, one management interface. So That's what's what the, we're really trying to do. What's the engineering underneath the covers? Because you know, the, the more we talk about simplifying IT, the more complex IT gets um, underneath. <laughs> you know, hopefully not to the user and the consumer. What's the engineering underneath the covers to, to create this convergence? Um, so you've got to put a you've got to put a lot of energy into the architecture, of course. And um, so there's there's different things like APIs and openness. Um, we've we've got a, a very strong history of HP being open in the marketplace. And even when we introduce cloud system, we're open. So we we actually support HP server storage networking. You and I were blogging a little bit about this a little while ago. Mm. Uh, but we also support non-HP servers, non-HP networking, non-HP storage. So openness and then APIs so that these different uh, uh, deployment models can actually uh, talk to each other. And one of, the, one of the, the big things in this space that we've um, really you know, um, 
showed some meat behind our uh, converged cloud strategy is in the area of what we call cloud bursting. Um, and, and bursting means uh, I can use private cloud resources, but if I need extra resources, I can transparently just reach out to a public cloud provider and grab resources from HP public cloud, HP cloud services, and there might be, you know, you just need extra capacity or maybe you need to deploy your, your application in Singapore and you don't have a footprint in Singapore, so fine, just put it into Singapore using a public cloud provider um, just through this transparent interface. It's as easy as select, um, select a deployment model and take your application and just drop it in. What happens to the data in that scenario, yeah. Nick? Yeah, so, so, so Nick, you know, one of the challenges we really see here, I mean, there's still the speed of light challenge and there's not enough bandwidth from here to there, so how, how do we solve that? How do we do really do? You guys working on that speed of light problem? Oh, in the lab? We've got to talk to HP Labs <laughs> on that one. There's some interesting we'll things We'll have them on later this week. <laughs> so. That's good, talk to them about speed of light. Um, but yeah, you know, there's, there's um, you actually, this helps you in some of the, um, the performance models. Let me give you an example. Um, one, uh, uh, one company that's doing scholastic testing out there. So if your child goes to school today, um, does a mathematics test, they do it online, right? What actually happens is the, the scholastic test is out in the public cloud and it's, uh, it's hosted on a public cloud as close to your child taking the test as possible for, um, for performance reasons, right? So you take your math test, you connect up to HP Cloud Services or Amazon or, um, or Savas, you get, you get the test taken and when you're done, then your marks get stored in the database. But the database is actually in the private cloud. So that's a, a kind of a use model where it actually makes sense to use a, a public cloud provider with the test as close to the student as possible. But from a security and uh, perspective, you keep the, you know, the, the data inside of your private cloud. In fact, there's regulations um, in various different countries, Canada, others have uh, regulations that you know scholastic data, student data, must stay in a province or in, in a state or in the country, right? So it's, it's an example, but it can actually improve performance. Does that make sense? Go ahead, sorry. And um, uh, one of the things that we were, um, that I want to emphasize is um, we're doing, uh, 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 we're, we're unveiling new capabilities for our cloud solutions today at HP Discover. And um, at originally with uh, Cloud System, which is our showcase um, solution for building a cloud, uh, turnkey cloud for our customers, virtually turnkey cloud for our customers. Uh, previously, we were able to burst to Savas, and I think we talked about this before, but what we're announcing today is the ability to burst to HP Cloud Services, HP's public cloud offering, as well as Amazon, and then you'll see um, other Cloud Agile service provider partners show up even uh, further in the future as well. So, so uh, Meg obviously called out security as one of the things that CEOs are concerned about. And of course, you know, security is a lot of there's a lot of process and policy around that. So when you talk about these different public cloud providers uh, that you're integrating with, how do you as what do you tell customers to say? Well, I'm I'm concerned about you know my, that my edicts transferring. To these providers, I'm concerned about audits. I'm concerned about what an incident. I might define an incident differently than what than what they define an incident. The frequency of reporting. How do you rationalize and reconcile all, all those? Is that HP's role to do that as the sort of cloud integrator, cloud broker, if you will? Is that me as the customer who has to sort out all that stuff? Um, well, HP absolutely will step out to work with uh, the customer. We have workshops. Uh, we have services. Uh, we can analyze um, a, a customer's environment with the customer, determine which applications should go across that line and which shouldn't. And the example of scholastic testing, you know, it made sense for the test to be out, but not the data to be out, not the actual scholastic data to be out. So we can sit down, and we have sat down with many of our enterprise customers and um, done these workshops, assess their applications give them a roadmap of which applications can go, shouldn't go, yeah, okay. and, and then work through So, that. So customers should think about this. I mean, you think about Amazon. Amazon's good for some stuff, it's not good for other things. Absolutely. So you're right. not trying to change Amazon and mold it into an enterprise-wide play necessarily. You're saying, look, if Amazon is the right fit 
Let's use Amazon. Mm -hmm. If if it's not, we're going to tell you it's not, and we're going right. to go and, to and, you know, and another the, cloud the, service. The nice thing, well, the bottom line is, businesses are using public cloud, and the IT departments most of the time don't even know it because developers are finding that when they go to the IT department and say, I need some infrastructure to test a new version of my application, it takes them a month to get that set up. And that's way too slow, especially with agile development. Nowadays, there's a new version of that application to test every week, and it may require different infrastructure as it evolves. So these developers are going to the public cloud. They're doing it, they're doing development out there, and IT isn't in the loop. And, and with Converge Cloud and Cloud System, our objective here is to, to provide a self-service portal available for the developers. They say they need resources, they can get it from Amazon, they can get it from the private cloud in a matter of minutes or seconds. They can uh, burst and move, um, move across the line very simply and easily. So that facilitates the IT department and the security department getting involved and working with the end customers, the end business, because like I said, right now they're doing it. And they may have not, they're taking maybe some chances in the security area, but this kind of brings it all back together again to take a look at so, that. So obviously the kind of the management, the orchestration layer is critical here. Uh, and uh, we, Cloud Systems has been around now for a couple of years. Is, is huh? this just an expansion of the existing management uh, piece that you have there? or? You know, what, what, is, there, is there something new on the management Yeah, we've piece? been we've been in the marketplace for a number of years. We started with basic capabilities, um, you know, when it was Blade System Matrix in its first incarnation, yep. and then we moved to Cloud System, moved it to be much more open and heterogeneous, um, self-service, disaster recovery, capacity planning. Um, with the latest um, announcements that we're making, we have bursting, like I said, additional bursting capabilities. Um, we have, um, a software only solution, so you can take software, drop it on top of any VMware server or any Hyper-V server, and within a day have your cloud up and running, so very, very quick, mm -hmm. uh, very, very simple. Um, the cloud service uh, automation software, which is part of cloud system, has, has undergone a, a major announcement today as well, simplified user interface um, s s uh, from a self-service portal perspective, and then a graphical drag and drop um, uh, designer to build out your your application uh, to lay it on top of the infrastructure. We've got we've got a great drag and drop designer for infrastructure that I've demoed here last year, and now this brings a graphical designer for the application on top of that to simplify. So yeah, we are incrementally adding capabilities uh, to cloud system and tying that to our public cloud offering and other partner uh, cloud offerings okay. and bringing it all together. So, so uh, you know, HP has a robust you know, management portfolio yes. for, for the cloud systems. What, what, what's the entry point for that? The entry point is um, cloud system matrix is the infrastructure as a service. You can push a button and get a whole set of infrastructure uh, in minutes. It, it'll provision server storage, networks, OS's, VMware, Hyper-V, um, and, uh, and, and some basic application deployment. Ste second step up is you deploy an entire application, uh, lay down all the application logic, um, it manages, it patches it, it updates it, so it doesn't just deploy it today and then six months from now it's out of date because there's a new version. Right. It keeps it up to date and if you know a rogue um, a database administrator goes into that system and changes the configuration, it flags it and it remediates that and right. puts but, it back. But, but you know, are we starting, you know, pretty much starting at kind of the large enterprise or you know how, how far down market will this well, push? Well we I've seen medium enterprises put in uh, in cloud system, absolutely. I've seen service service providers use it to build out their cloud offerings. But now with this software offering where you can just take cloud system and within a day layer it on top of any ESX or any VMware server, it's very much moving into the, the, the smaller mid-market uh, space because it's much simpler to deploy. Uh, it's um, it's uh, uh, virtual machines only. You get uh, more more capabilities with the full solution, but within a day you get a good cloud so up and running. So is that price per VM then, or you know what? what that is, um, we're priced on a per server basis okay. um, for the private cloud and a per VM basis uh, as you burst out to the public cloud because okay. 
I don't know how many servers uh, are really going on behind right. the curtain, right? So we price on a per VM basis. We, um, Nick, we did a survey recently, we, we did a survey a year ago asking people what the predominant cloud strategy was. Was it public, was it private, was it hybrid? Is cloud a bunch of BS, and the <laughs> buzzword? And last year, very few, single digits said yes, hybrid is our primary strategy. And a, a sizable number, you know, 15, 20% said it's just a meaningless buzzword. We did a survey exactly a year later, and hybrid clouds through the roof, about 38%. Up um, and to the right, absolutely. Up and to the right, and uh, buzzword way down. Still guys just getting started, there's a big chunk that's just getting started, maybe 15%, but the hybrid off the charts. I've noticed Why is that? that? Well, um, at first hybrid was hype, right? And no, there wasn't a lot of backing as to, you know, sub, where's the substance of what can we really do with hybrid? There was a lot of people talking about hybrid and bursting, but until you can really do it and see it and have management systems and security mm -hmm. that, that make it tangible, mm -hmm. people didn't know exactly what it was. It wasn't a solution. It wasn't a solution. A lot of but, PowerPoints. But yeah, yeah <laughs> when you get down to brass tacks and, and deliver it, and you know, even when I was on stage bursting to, to Savas last year, that was um, not shipping at that point, but now it's absolutely shipping. We've got customers using it, and then people are going, I know what it is, because yeah. I got my hands on it. And uh, so hybrid is definitely taking off, uh, especially since people are noticing that their business is, the IT departments are noticing that their business is using public cloud. I think a lot of the yourselves, the industry analysts as well, are you know telling um, the IT organizations that it's happening, even if they don't know about it. Forrester, Gartner, others mm -hmm. have written reports about this. Right. So there's a lot more awareness that the business is using the public cloud, even though the IT department didn't know about it. Yeah, I mean, I think the, the other, right, you're touching on the other big change, which I, I've sort of observed, which is, it was the techie guys, the developers spinning up you know, EC2 instances, or it was small businesses that yeah. didn't have an IT shop, yeah. and now it's you know the traditional IT folks are saying, yeah, this is actually real, so. Yeah, and I've been in a room uh, two years ago where uh, we had I, an, a room with IT, and then the next um, couple hours later, we had more a room with business, and we were talking about cloud. And I'd say 25% of the people actually folded their arms and went, you know this cloud thing? I'm not going to let it into my company until I know exactly what's going on and how it integrates in and fits in. And uh, the room over from the same companies, talking to the same companies, the business side, they're already in it, yeah. right? That's We're two years ago, it. there was complete disconnect. No, you're right, you're, you're right. You talk to IT people and say, our organization is not doing external cloud. We're not, right. and you talk We're not allowing we'll it. Go down the hall and like, oh yeah, we've been doing it for a year and a half. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. So, so I think um, most people have gotten a lot more awareness of what's really yeah. going on in their own companies. And they, they want a hybrid environment because some applications need to stay inside the four walls of the data center. Absolutely. And, but it does make sense to use a managed service provider and a, and a public cloud provider for the right applications. And there's great reasons for that. Extra capacity, locality to customers. Um, so, you know, use case after use cases uh, is, is showing up. The other thing we asked people, uh, what are you going to use? Uh, what initiatives, for which initiatives are you going to tap outside services? And it was cloud management, cloud, cloud deployment, cloud management, some little less cloud strategy. Mm -hmm. So those three really, you know, cloud deployment and cloud management went right mm -hmm. to the top. So people are doing it. Big data strategy, by the way, was also up there, but big data deployment's way low. So, well, you know, yeah. back it up, cloud uh, was uh, low on the deployment some years ago, yeah, a right. couple of years ago. Yeah. And it, and I don't know, yeah. we've got uh, at least 600 production, private, public cloud in um, all over the world, and that, that's definitely going up and to the right. I, I expect big data to, yeah. to follow suit. Right? 2012, you've heard it here, Wikibon, SiliconANGLE, 2012, the year of the cloud. Uh, Nick Vandersweep, thanks very much for coming back on theCUBE. You it's, bet, guys. Uh, great to see you. This is theCUBE, and we're live from HP Discover in Las Vegas. Keep it right there, we'll be right back. We've got a CIO segment, keep it right there.